With Remembrance Sunday coming up this weekend and the controversy over the rainbow poppy, we at The History Teacher wanted to find out more about the role of members of the LGBTQ plus community in World War I. So, here are five LGBTQ plus heroes to honour this Remembrance Weekend. Number one, May Lowther. May was born in London in 1874 and was more commonly known as Tupi. Until the outbreak of World War I, she was known as a talented sportswoman, but as the war progressed, Tupi wanted to do something to help the increasing numbers of injured soldiers. She set up an all-female multinational ambulance service in 1917. The women worked as volunteers and stayed close to the German front, providing ambulance recovery services to the troops. Patients were transported in the women's own cars or in cars that had been donated to them. Tupi's efforts were mentioned in dispatches and she was awarded the Croix de Guerre for her heroic deeds. Tupi is believed to be the inspiration for the character Stephen Gordon in Radcliffe Hall's novel The Well of Loneliness. The novel tells the story of a young lesbian who hunts, wears trousers and cuts her hair short. The novel caused shock at the time and was at the centre of a trial for indecency. Tupi died in 1944. Number two, Joseph Randall Ackerley. Joseph was born in 1896 in London. During World War I, he was a commissioned officer in the Surrey Regiment. Joseph took part in the first day of the Battle of the Somme, a battle which stands as the bloodiest in British history. In the first day, 20,000 British soldiers were killed and a further 60,000 were injured. Joseph was injured and spent six hours lying in a shell hole until he was finally found. Sadly, his best friend Bobby Soames, whom he had met whilst he was training, was killed. A year later, in May 1917, Joseph again was injured in battle and was eventually found by a German stretcher bearer. He was transferred to a prisoner of war camp after treatment for his injuries and Joseph eventually returned to Britain in December 1918 where he discovered that his brother Peter had been killed. Joseph suffered with survivor's guilt for many years, believing the wrong brother had died. Joseph went on to write a number of plays and novels. In his 1925 play, Prisoners of War, he described his own experiences and referenced his same-sex attraction. For the rest of his life, Joseph spoke out about the unfair treatment of gay people and became a well-known gay personality. Joseph died in 1967, just one month before homosexuality was legalised in the UK. Number three, an unknown, possibly transgender or gender non-conforming US sailor. First of all, I want to thank transcity.org for uncovering this incredibly rare source and sharing it so freely. The article appears in a French magazine called Regiment and was dated May 23rd, 1918. The article shows three photographs of a US World War I sailor. In one photograph, the sailor appears in uniform, but in the other two, they are shown wearing women's clothing. The caption reads, you see this young American actress who is gracious in front of the lens? Isn't she pretty? Well, it is, and we get an ellipsis, a young sailor from Uncle Sam's fleet who is also an artist in civilian life and who is one of these female transvestites. Note the use of the word transvestites here. It's a French word which encompasses a number of gender and cross-dressing groups, including trans women and gender non-conforming people. We don't know anything about this sailor, but it's such a rare piece of trans history that I wanted to include it and share it with you. If you can shed any light about who this sailor was or any background about this, please let me know in the comments and I will pass it on. Number four, Ethel Mary Smith. Mary was born in London in 1858. Throughout her life, she was known to have had relationships with women and often wore male clothing. Although she had trained at the Leipzig Conservatory and worked as a composer of operas, she joined the suffragette movement in 1910 and was arrested for throwing stones at a politician's house in 1912. When the war broke out, she joined the British Red Cross and trained as a radiographer. She volunteered at the large hospital in Vichy, which dealt with patients with severe facial injuries. After the war, she wrote her memoirs and was made a dame in 1922, becoming the first female composer to be awarded a damehood. She died in 1944. And finally, number five, Edward Morgan Forster. Better known as the author of Howard's End and A Passage to India, E.M. Forster was born in London in 1879. He spent much of his young life at university and then travelling in Europe before the war broke out in 1914. He was a conscientious objector but joined the British Red Cross in order to help soldiers out the front. He was posted to Egypt where his job was to search hospitals for soldiers reported missing in action. While he was there, he met Mohammed El Adil, with whom he fell in love. The relationship lasted three years but ended 
ended when Muhammad's father forced him to marry. Muhammad never forgot Edward and named his first son Morgan after him. Muhammad died in 1922 and his widow sent his gold ring to Edward. It is said that Forster slept with the ring under his pillow. After the war, Edward continued to write and was nominated for 20 Nobel Prizes for Literature. He died in 1970. Okay, that's everything for today. I want to thank the amazing researchers and archivists at the Imperial War Museum in London who are doing some sterling work in telling the lost stories of LGBTQ plus heroes. You can find links to all the books and articles I've mentioned in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment. I always reply as quickly as I can. Don't forget, if you like my content, I'd really appreciate it if you'd buy me a coffee to keep me going. The link is in the description. And that's everything for today and I will see you next time.